Hi guys, this is Professor Sears. We're going to go over some tracheostomy care just so you can see it a little more close up and we'll go through the steps of the actual skill. That way you guys can use this as you're studying. So I've got my mannequin with a tracheostomy tube here. I do have a package for a suction catheter kit. Um, this is not quite the one that you have, but it looks very similar. So there's a lot of stuff that you have to prepare and set up before you come into the room even. You wanna make sure you have your kit. This little cup is gonna simulate my sterile saline pour bottle today. And then I just have something that I can drape my patient with to keep their gown from getting dirty. So what we're gonna do when we first go in, you know, of course we should have verified the order, verified our patient, but setting up the actual skill here, one thing that you can do is while you still have two hands that are not sterile, go ahead and set up your suction. So the wall suction unit at the head of the bed, you can go ahead and turn that up to between 100 to 120 millimeters of mercury and make sure that the tubing, it's usually a clear tubing with a blue end, is attached to the bottom of that machine. That way all you have to do once you're sterile, you'll create one sterile hand, one dirty hand, and the dirty hand will hook the wall suction into your tracheostomy suction catheter. Um, and it makes it a little bit simpler to do more steps while you have two hands. All right, so we're gonna say that we went ahead, we turned on our wall suction catheter, we made sure the tubing is hooked up to that. So now what I can do, I can open my packaging here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the sterile packaging and I can remove this kit. So when I open this kit, this should look fairly similar to the one that you guys have. Um, and it's actually set up really nicely here. So again, when I'm doing sterile, I wanna make sure that I'm grabbing you know, these little tabs here. I have a little cup that you guys have for water. Um, so you can push the edges together this way and it'll pop open into a nice little cup that we can use. So we will use this one today. I know that your kit is not necessarily set up this way where you can get it out without breaking sterile, but if you can, it's great to do. So I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna drape my patient to make sure that if they cough while we're suctioning, I don't get any sputum onto their gown. You know, work smarter, not harder. Save yourself a little time. I'm also gonna go ahead, while I have two hands, open my saline pour bottle and fill up my little cup here. Okay, and then I can go ahead and get everything prepared that I need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this packaging here. Remember that I am only touching that one inch border on the outside to make sure everything inside stays sterile. This one has gloves inside it, so you can reach in and grab. Uh, my kit's pretty old, so it's probably gonna stick here, but you can grab one glove, okay? So I'm actually gonna not use these so I can give you a visual cue, but you could sterile glove with these ones here. What I want to do though is I'm going to use this other kit. Now my suction catheter is in here, so I will be using this one to show you, but remember if you sterile glove, it has to be off of your sterile field. Okay, so if I'm opening this package, it's gotta be over here. So remember, you can touch the cuff here because this will be touching the inside of my arm, so it's not considered sterile. The glove is set up to go on this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my sterile glove on, okay? and you don't wanna reach back in and grab the outside part of the cuff to unroll it, just leave it, it's okay. This one, I'm gonna pick up cause sterile can touch sterile. Slide my fingers under the cuff like this, and I keep my thumb away because as I'm pulling, this inside part's gonna to touch the inside of my hand, so I don't want my thumb touching that. So I can put my hand in this way, and I folded it myself so it's backwards, that's okay. Okay, and again, don't be tempted to fix the cuff and make it look perfect. So what I did for you guys is a visual cue. My right hand is gonna stay sterile, my left hand is gonna be my dirty hand, okay, or my quote unquote clean hand, dirty hand. Okay, so you can see as I'm doing the scales. When you move the sterile packaging, remember that outside inch border is considered dirty, so you have to grab it from the middle and dispose of it into your trash receptacle. So we're gonna go back here to my sterile catheter and notice I didn't grab the outside of the package. 
Normally you have a little more space. I know we're all working from home, making do with what we have, okay? So this is sterile. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my suction catheter. Again, I'm gonna move this so it's out of my way. So my suction catheter here, it does have some little markings for the depth, but what we're gonna do when we insert it it, uh, we'll get to that in a second, sorry, getting ahead of myself. So when you get this out, you want to maintain control of this tubing, maintain control. So if you wrap this around your hand, that way you have control and the tubing won't accidentally bump something that's not sterile. So at this point, what I need to do, I need to hook my wall section onto this. So I would be grabbing the suction tubing and hooking it on here. The next thing I want to do is check that my, um, my suction is working. And the way that I will do that is to use a little bit of water to see if you get a good suction seal. So this one has a little hole here that my thumb will go over. So my left hand, because I touched the wall suction, is contaminated, so it can never touch this plastic tubing again. But it can touch this little, mine is pink, but this valve here. So I'm going to go ahead and hold this part of the tubing. I'm going to keep my thumb off the section. And I can go ahead and dip the end into this uh, cup with my sterile saline solution. And then when I tap over this, I should hear the suction and see water going up through the tubing. So my suction is working. I'm going to go ahead and coil this around my hand again to keep control of it. Um, and then what I need to do... I need to go ahead, typically your patient will have oxygen on. We usually are hyperoxygenating them before the procedure. So in this instance, we're going to pretend that they just have the little trach collar. It's almost like a simple face mask that's designed to go over the tracheostomy tube. So maybe I turned it up to 15 liters to hyperoxygenate them while I was preparing. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that mask. Again, dirty hand can touch patient. Then I'm going to get my valve here again. So this is a time where you don't want to make any quick jerky movements. You want to keep control over the tubing to make sure you maintain sterility. Now what you're going to do next, you have to insert this tube. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uncoil. And then I can go ahead and start feeding this tube down into their tracheostomy tube. I'm going to go until I feel resistance. That would be the carina where the trachea bifurcates into the bronchi. I need to back it up half an inch though. And then as I tap this, I will start swirling this on the way out. And it's suctioning intermittently here for about 10 to 15 seconds per pass, no longer than that. I replace the patient's oxygen and I need to wait about a minute between suction passes to make sure that the patient is getting enough oxygen. Um, the size of this tubing should not be bigger than half the diameter of their tracheostomy tube here because if it's taking up the whole diameter, it's going to be harder to put the tube in, but your patient's also not going to be able to breathe around it while the tube's going in. Okay, so we'll let them hyperoxygenate for a minute. In the meantime, I'm looking to see have they improved. So has that rattling sound as they're breathing decreased? Is their pulse oxygen level going up higher? Is their skin color getting pinker because they're now oxygenating better? So we're going to say that they haven't improved enough yet. We're going to do another suction pass. So after a minute, I can again remove the trach color, get control of my valve here. I'm going to unwrap, and then I'm going to start feeding this down in. So the way that you know it's far enough, again, is if you hit resistance or if your patient starts coughing, back it up half an inch, then start to tap intermittently on this suction valve here while you swirl the catheter out. If you need to, between passes, you know, we'll put our oxygen back on first. So oxygen goes back on. You can clean it out by putting it in here and tap, tap, tap to get the secretions out of your tubing so you get a better suction seal. So at this point, we're going to say that our patient 
um, was, you know, our, our suctioning was successful. Our patient's skin color has improved. Maybe their pulse ox level, their oxygen saturation is now 92%. We don't hear the rattling noise anymore. So we can go ahead and return our oxygen back to the normal settings. I can go ahead and dispose of this suction catheter. So at this point, I, I don't need to be sterile anymore. And we can go ahead and clean up our workstation. So make sure that anything needs to go in biohazard goes in biohazard. Anything that should be um, put in the trash bin can go in the trash. Um, and then what we'll do in the next video, we'll go through the dressing care.